Hi, it's Tuesday, the 13th of April, and I continue to read and wonder my way through Luke's Gospel. Um, and just before we get into it, um, pretty soon we're going to be finished Luke's Gospel, and I am trying to decide what to go on to next. Since we started this over a year ago, we have read all the way through um, John, all the way through Mark, all the way through the book of Acts, and now we're finishing up Luke. And so I'm wondering where to go next. Do I read Matthew's Gospel? Do I read one of Paul's letters, say Romans or Corinthians? Or do we do something from the Hebrew Scriptures, like Genesis or Exodus? Um, any thoughts, if you know how to, message me directly or comment here on the video, and I'll figure out what I'm going to do next. Anyway, enough of that. Today we're going to read Luke 23, verses 32 through 38. Um, and uh, as I mentioned yesterday, if you were with us, um, I'm basically taking the... the uh, the crucifixion and the death of Jesus a little bit at a time. We're spreading it over the five days, Monday through Friday. So um, today uh, we are we are on our way to the crucifixion. So yesterday Jesus was carrying his cross, and Simon of Cyrene was um, uh, was was uh, foist into the mix to carry Jesus's cross. And now we pick it up here, Luke twenty three verses thirty two through thirty eight. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he's the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. So there we go. Um, the crucifixion of Jesus. And uh, not that it matters a whole lot, but that most of verse 34, uh, the line that says, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That doesn't seem to be in the earliest text we have of Luke. It may have been added a little bit later. Uh, and I don't know that that matters a lot. Um, what I wonder about, um, quite honestly, is uh, the power of, of the way Luke has told this so simply. Um, Matthew um, and, and, and Mark and, and, and John... They add a lot more detail. But Luke has taken this, this pivotal moment, this defining moment in the, in the life of Jesus, and essentially said he was crucified. That's it. When they came to the place that's called the skull, which is also, if you speak Latin, Calvary or Golgotha, same thing. We've just translated it into English. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And then maybe, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing and the people... Je That's it. Um, I, I don't want to send you to bad movies, um, but if you think of all the movies where you have seen uh, the crucifixion of Jesus depicted... We spent a fair bit of time in the pain and suffering. Crucifixion was a very, very painful way to die. Uh, and there's a part of me that's surprised that Luke doesn't get into that. I mean, for goodness sakes, we, 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 we've talked about, about, about Simon, the guy who helped carry the car. I know who, where Simon comes from. Uh, I got details on that. There's all sorts of wonderful little details. Um, I go back to that, that wonderful moment when Jesus, when Peter denied Jesus and Jesus looked at him, even though he couldn't have seen him directly. Um, like, I got all those wonderful details. But here, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Boom, that's it. The, the, the sparsity of it all actually makes it quite, for me, quite dramatic and quite telling. This incredible event, Luke isn't even going to try and describe it in a way um, that I can feel it or imagine it. He's going to leave it to me to imagine it, um, 
to 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 come to that moment myself because I think because it is a, a pivotal faith moment. Uh, I, I think most of us uh, engaging in the Christian faith um, uh, struggle makes it seem like a, like a hard thing. Engage, um, work at what is going on at the cross. What are we to make of that moment? Is is, is it an act? As some people think of of, of a cruel God. Um, who would have his beloved son suffer for humanity? Is it the act of a remarkable loving God? Uh, is it an act of God? I mean, where is God? And this God is on the cross in Jesus. Um, God is not distant watching. Um, we talk about all those things. Um, uh, I, I recall someone once saying that, you know, every day Paul, it's as if every day Paul wakes up and looks at the cross and goes, what does it mean today? Um, I think it means something new every time we think about it. And Luke has given us that space. Luke has just said he was crucified. And then he tells us, gives a couple of other details that help fulfill the scriptures, um, but don't really tell us about what's going on up on the cross. As I mentioned, the, the crucifixion was a painful way to die. Um, it, it, it was also not an efficient way to die. Uh, it didn't begin with the Romans. Uh, Romans and Greeks did it. I believe it goes back to Carthaginians before that. It, it had been around in the ancient world. And it was primarily used as a deterrent. You crucified people so that others would see their pain and their suffering, their horrible slow death, and therefore not want to break the law, whatever that law might be. So it was meant to be demonstrative. It was meant to affect people, right? Meant to affect bystanders. So there is a remarkable um, poetry, I suppose, a painful poetry in the idea of Jesus being crucified, not executed. Uh, it's not simply executed, but crucified. The method of execution that was meant to move people's hearts and minds. Now, in a very negative way, it's meant to frighten them and terrify them, but it was meant to affect them. And every time I, I come to the cross in, 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 in the Gospels, it affects me. But Luke, maybe more than the others, has just made it so, so direct and so sparse that it just invites me to wonder anew and to move from side to side and just try to, to make sense of it. Luke um, refers to the two who are crucified uh, with Jesus, uh, the right and the left. Uh, we, we, we translate as, as criminals. Uh, they crucify Jesus there with the criminals, it says. Um, the Greek word that's actually used is, is robbers. Uh, and I point that out because Luke uses a different word than Matthew and Mark use. Um, he uses the word robbers. Um, the problem is that robbers generally wouldn't be crucified. Um, crucifixion was uh, done by Rome to enemies of the state. So if I broke into your house and stole something from you, I'm not really an enemy of Rome. Uh, and they wouldn't need to make an example of me that way. Um, if I broke into Pilate's home, then yes. Um, but also, but if I, if I committed an act of violence in that robbery, that is to say I killed somebody or I was I was stealing to aid a, an insurrection, um, then that would lead to a crucifixion. So when, G, so when Luke calls them robbers, but use, well, we call them criminals here, but when Luke uses the term that's usually used for robbers, it is a violent robber. Um, so a robber who has killed. Um, but again, it would be uh, in the aid of something that was against the state. At least, that's how I understand it. And now you're speaking to somebody who used to spend a fair bit of time with, with classic history, with Greek and Roman history. That was what I did in university. Uh, but that was a long time ago. Uh, and I'm sure we've learned many more things since then. Um, but I, I wonder a little bit about that. Um, why Luke calls them um, robber criminals. Um, he makes that, that distinction. Uh, he uses the same word for Barabbas, by the way. So, uh, and Barabbas is also described as an insurrectionist. So you see, I think there has to be something political going on with these two criminals. But whatever it is, 
Jesus being crucified in the middle is the bigger criminal. Isn't that a strange irony? Uh, the one who actually hasn't stolen anything. He's not a robber. He's not killed anybody. Uh, he is not an insurrectionist. He is none of those things, and yet he is seen uh, as the bigger criminal. Um, you remember before I was talking about how, how, how Pilate, uh, previous meditations, Pilate clearly doesn't, doesn't believe that Jesus is guilty of these things. He doesn't want to crucify him, but he eventually does. He goes along with the crowd, and we can speculate as to why, but he does. But not only does he go along with the crowd, but now he steps it up. Or at least, at least the ones in charge of the crucifixion have. We've gone from going like, I don't think he's really guilty, to, well, but I have to do this, otherwise it could get crazy here. Uh, we've gone from that to, yeah, let's highlight him. Again, is that to, is that to make the crowd um, happy? Um, we don't hear much about the crowd here. We hear that the people stood by watching and the leaders scoffed at him. Uh, he saved others, let him save himself. He's the Messiah, the Son of God, his chosen one. Again, remember yesterday, the leaders and the crowd were together asking for Jesus to be crucified. And now that it's happening, the crowd is silent. People stood by watching. And the leaders are scoffing. At least that's the way Luke describes it. Um, the leaders scoffed. He saved others, let him save himself. If he's the Messiah of God, he's the chosen one. I have to wonder whether they're not looking at the crowd who have suddenly gone silent and thought to themselves, the crowd may not be on our side anymore. We might lose the crowd over this one. And that they're speaking to the crowd, making their case. Hey, guys, if he really is the Messiah, then <laughs> he's going to get down. You know? So if he's the Messiah, he'll, he'll come down. But if he doesn't, then, then we were right after all. And we've just saved you from a charlatan, right? Um, I I hear I hear the leaders um, in, in, in 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 standing in the shadow of the cross. I hear them trying desperately to justify what they've done, because like Pilate, they know exactly what they've done. They've killed an innocent man. They may not understand or appreciate that he is um, he is the begotten Son of God but they know that he shouldn't be on the cross. So they're trying to shore up a little support. Hey guys, like you see, like you see what we had to do, right? Because, you know, if he is the Messiah, he'll be coming down. And, and if he comes down, then we'll deserve it. But, you know, but he's not coming down, is he? Um, the soldiers also mock him. It's interesting, the soldiers mock him uh, for um, being king of the Jews, which would be to set himself up as a rival to Rome. The leaders from the temple, uh, they set him up as a blasphemer, a blasphemer, one who, who has set himself up uh, as a rival to their authority. Everybody feels a little threatened by Jesus because everybody's trying to hang on to their power. And I wonder about that sometimes. Luke has done a wonderful job just giving this to me. And instead of describing Jesus' agony and his pain, he has given me just a little bit about the people around him. And I recognize everybody trying to hang on to their power. The people, the crowd, may be realizing this was a mistake. The temple leaders, knowing it was a mistake, hoping to get the crowd back on their side needing to hang on to the power. The soldiers, again, needing to justify what they're doing. They know they're being cruel. They know that they've done a terrible thing. So, yeah, but he was going to overthrow the government. We can't, we can't have that. Everybody trying to justify what they've done when they know they have done the wrong thing. And all of that's happening because Jesus is on a cross a cross that is used to influence people. That's the point of the cross, is to make you understand the power of the empire. And here we understand the power of the kingdom of God. Wow, I'm getting preachy, aren't I? Um, but you know, when people ask, 
did Jesus have to go to the cross? You know, um, as somebody who loves history, no, 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 he didn't. Um, but as somebody um, who loves his faith and spends a lot of time uh, thinking about things theologic, uh, my Christology says, yeah, yeah, Jesus did have to come to the cross. We needed that demonstrative act of God's presence in our suffering and in our pain. Um, we needed to see how Jesus' death highlights the way we as human beings cling to power, do the wrong thing, fully aware of it, and then rather than admit a mistake or try to fix it, we double down. <laughs> He's the Messiah. He'll get down. If he's the king of the Jews, he can save himself. I have a lot to wonder about today. I have to wonder a little bit about the way that I am sometimes like the leaders of the temple, how I am often like the soldiers, um, how I am sometimes perhaps like, like one of the robbers crucified to the right or to the left of Jesus. Um, and I do appreciate the line that may have been added a little later, but Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Um, the thing is, they do. And the truth is, I do sometimes know what I'm doing. But I think that I'm still... I think that Jesus still asks the Father to forgive me, to forgive us, that we might try again and not this time cling to power. And this time, perhaps not double down, but do what is right. I'm going to leave it right there. Luke was brief. Today, I'm going to be kind of brief myself. But let me offer a prayer. Loving God, we thank you. Even though the story is painful, we recognize the love and the power of what? has happened that Luke tells us such a story. We thank you for, for the simple telling by Luke, the simplicity that allows us to, to imagine, to wonder, to come to the cross, to stand away from the cross, to change our perspective of the cross, to come to understand what is happening on the cross. God, we thank you for the opportunity to wonder and we ask that our wondering today help us understand the love that is revealed in this story help us understand the ministry to which we are called the love that we are meant to share we pray through the holy spirit we pray in jesus name amen and that's it for me for today but i look forward to checking in with you tomorrow until we do check in please know that you are not alone god sees you god loves you and god loves through you god bless you see you tomorrow